Hi, it's Sora here from Wizards Code. We've just put out a new open source library. It's very early stage, but we think it's pretty cool and we thought you might like to see it, maybe work with it and give us some feedback. It's what's driving me right now. The lip animations are coming from an asset called Salsa. We've done a video on how you can do that, but the body animations are all coming from this new tool. It's a semi-procedural tool that creates uh, random animations based on emotions that the character has. Those emotions in turn can be driven by any external forces. In the case of what you're watching now, it's being driven by a timeline, but it could equally be what's happening to the character in the game setting. So this video is about how we do this. Click the subscribe button to learn more about how this goes, to learn more about other open source projects we put out there. Do think about taking the code and playing around with it. We do accept bug reports. We love bug reports. Uh, we love ideas. Please comment here. Let me know what you think. How can we improve this? Let me know if you think it's a waste of time. Everything helps. Let's get going. In order to understand this, we need a little bit of theory first. So we're gonna look at the theory of two dimensions of emotions. What this says is there are about 20 emotions that we can track, but if we measure these independently, we can boil them down to just two dimensions, activation and enjoyment. We can then use these two dimensions inside of a Unity freeform 2D Cartesian blend tree. And that blend tree can control the animations that we're gonna use on our character. So let's see how that works. So here we have the emotional state mono behavior that you attach to any character that you want to have emotions. Right now it only has four emotions. That is anger and sadness that are on the opposite ends of the activation spectrum. And also we've got fear and pleasure, which are at the opposite ends of the pleasure or the enjoyment spectrum. And with those, we've been able to do quite a lot. But with this current video that I'm doing, I'm finding there's not enough movement across the activation and so not enough variation in the animations. So I'm gonna add in interest. And here we are inside of the emotion state. And we have this enum called emotion type, which describes the emotions that we're tracking. And I'm just adding interest into that. Now you'll notice I added it in the middle of the enum, which is a bad idea. Uh, it's this rookie mistake. You'll see why later if you don't know why already, but we'll fix it later too. So here is the interest emotion down here. So let's just copy these lines, which will add it into the collection of emotions. And I've already been through and calculated roughly what the multiplies will be for activation and pleasantness as I originally called it, but enjoyability or enjoyment that as I call it now. So we'll add those in and those are used to calculate the actual value. And um, we need to change the type to make that interest. There we go. And that's it. If we run the application now, that new emotion will be added into the emotional state with default values. We can change values in the inspector and see the changes at the top here where it tells us the enjoyment and activation levels. Excellent. We're going to want to change these values automatically. And there are a number of ways we could do that. We could react to the AI detecting things in the environment, for example, or we could use a timeline, which is what I'm doing here. So I have a timeline here, which is for the theory piece of these videos. And you can see it playing here. Uh, the playhead is moving along and every time the uh, clips get passed on the top row there on the emotional state track, uh, they set an emotional value inside of the emotional state mono behavior. So I have some notes here as to where I'll be a bit more excited. And so I go in, add a clip here, change the interest level, move it up a little bit. And then a little bit later, I'm gonna get even more excited. And so over there, I'm going to add another uh, marker, sorry, another clip and increase the interest level again. And uh, it doesn't matter what size these are, it's just a point in time. So they would perhaps be better as markers. I'll, I'll maybe re-implement them. Now here, I noticed that this is set as sadness. 
and this one here is interest which is not correct these were previously set up to be pleasure and fear and the reason for this if you remember i said it was a mistake to put the interest value into the middle of the enum because of course all the integers relating to the values in the enum have changed and so the values in here are all wrong so i'm just going to quickly go through and put those back to what they should have been right so now that's done we can play the animation and this is the point at which the interest level is raised we can see there's more motion but that's too much that's almost anger that we're seeing at that point so the interest levels are probably a bit high we could just drop the interest levels in the timeline but it's probably better to change the calculation of how interest affects the amount of the activation so we'll actually change it in the default values here uh, let's take it down to 0.45 um, we're also going to just tweak it down a little bit in the timeline just to get some balance and then when we've done this we can play it again and we'll find that these values actually are pretty good here on the top row we can see the animations with the interest emotion added and on the bottom row is the one without the interest in emotion and you can see that i'm a lot more animated a lot more active when i'm particularly interested in what i'm talking about no changes in the animations just in the emotions okay so now we have our activation and our enjoyment parameters that we're going to feed into our animation blend tree but how do they get in there well we'll look at that in a few moments but let's see how they get used once they're inside the animator so here's our animator you can see our parameters on the right the two we're interested in the moment is activation and enjoyment you can see that we have a layer here that just has an idle animation and a movement blend tree uh, but that's not the layer we're interested in if i click over to the layers we can see that there is this talking layer as well and this talking layer is currently set to have a weight of zero and it has a mask on it which is going to only operate on the upper body the arms and the head so if the base layer is in a movement state the talking animations will still continue in the upper body uh, and similarly if you're in the idle state the legs will take the animations from the idle state but the upper body will take the animations from the talking layer so let's have a look at the talking layer there's just one blend state in here so if i go into the blend states you can see there's quite a lot to it we're just going to focus on this top half to start with and if i select the blend tree you can see that it has the enjoyment and the activation parameters fed into it enjoyment is on the x-axis so that's this column and activation is on the y-axis this column so enjoyment and activation so you can see how that maps to the original two-dimensional emotional graph that we were looking at earlier on okay so how does this blend tree work well we're going to stay focused on the top half of it initially and that is on the enjoyment parameter so this is this axis here if we hit play on this animation we can see how this works um, first of all we're in the middle state so we're neither particularly happy nor particularly fearful or disappointed so moving over towards the happy contented end of the spectrum we move up to this point here where the animation changes to a nice open two-handed gesture lots of movement lots of um, engagement there and then if we move over further still this is okay there's a lot of movement now lots of engagement making his point he's really enjoying himself at this point and then if we move back to the other side this is moving more towards the um fearful or disappointed end of the spectrum so here he's put his hand on his hip his hands a little bit closed it's not so sure and then if we move all the way to the other side now he's getting quite defensive his hands are down he's kind of leaning away a little bit so i've deliberately picked animations that are somewhat aligned to the emotions that we have at each of these stages now there's a lot of repetition here and so how do we address that how do we prevent the same animation playing repeatedly over and over well to see that we need to go down a second level into our blend tree what we've looked at at the moment is just one path through this blend tree but if you look here 
there is a subblend tree in each of these paths. And that blend tree uses a cycle float parameter, so it's this parameter here, which is changed on a run, well, not random in this case, it's a cycle. So it goes from zero through to one, back down to zero again. So it looks kind of like this. And so it changes over a period of time the animation that is playing at that level. And so now we can go in and look at this one handed gesture. If we hit play on here, and move the parameter, you can see that what's happening here is I'm simply mirroring the same animation. So over this side, he uses his right hand, and over this side, he uses his left hand. So I'm doubling up the, the, the variety that we have. On one of the other ones, I actually have two different animations. This is one that I find in the video I've been doing recently has a lot of time in this space, and so I needed more variety. And so that's what I did. I found a couple of different animations that were fairly close to one another. They were both to open-handed, two-hand gesture like this. But if I move down here, you see I have a completely different open two-handed gesture. He's leaning forward a bit and being more engaged. So now let's take a look at the bottom half of this blend tree. This is less developed. I've been doing some experimentation on the x-axis here, the pleasure, the enjoyment axis, and it's been going really well. So I'm going to implement the same thing on the other axis, which is the activation axis. But right now we just have one animation for each point on the axis that I have here. It's not being converted to blend trees. I'll be doing that very soon. But we can still see how it works. If we start at, at the center point, we see a fairly neutral set of engagement uh, animations. And as we move up into the next phase, we're becoming more uh, engaged, more angry, more leaning forward, more emotion, more engagement, more activation. And then if we move all the way to the top, we see that we get into the, okay, now we're shouting, now we're arguing, this is really aggressive stuff. And if we go in the other direction, that is moving in the fear and the sadness direction, then you'll see the character beginning to withdraw a bit. So here, hands on hips, kind of, oh, I don't know about this. And then if we move further back still, the open hand pulling away, getting away from the situation. And so you can imagine once I've put blend trees in there and put a variety of different animations, then this will look a lot better. So putting it all together, let's hit play again. And we can simply move this around into different parts of the animation, um, of the emotion uh, spectrum. And we'll see different engagement from the character according to where he is on his roller coaster of life and so the end result is what you see right here when i'm talking um, this is being played through this very blend tree but how do the values actually get into the blend tree that's the last piece of the puzzle so let's take a look at that okay so we'll talk in a moment about how we use that blend tree but it is also worth just reminding ourselves about how we do the lip sync and the facial animations that comes from an asset called salsa lip sync and i've already done a video on how you set that up with a character in this case i'm using uma characters so the link is up above right now to get the parameters for the emotions to change the animations on the main body we have a, a few scripts involved. Those scripts are available as an open source library. See the description for a link to that. Um, but the ones we're interested in is this animation layer controller. What that does is it talks to Salsa and says, okay, is the character talking? And if it is, it increases the layer weight, in this case to 0.96, so almost all of it there, just allows a little bit of the um, idle animations to come through but it, it ramps up the weight of the talking layer uh, over a period of 0 0.5 seconds. And then when it stops talking, it ramps it back down to zero again. But how do the actual emotion values get in there? 
Well, you'll remember, hopefully, that the emotional state here is what tracks it on the character itself. To pull it from here and into the animation controller, we could have the emotional state directly injecting them. But I've actually gone a different approach here. What I've actually done is I have used a state machine behavior. So if I go through to the state here, you can see there are two state machine behaviors on this behavior. The first one is the emotional state machine behavior, and that is going to pull in the, um, the emotional state from the character that this controller is attached to. It's going to add a little bit of randomization if these check marks are, are added, just so that you get just a little bit of variety. It doesn't come up the same every single time. You can, of course, take that out completely and have a fully scripted uh, approach, but I find that having just a touch of animation in there adds to the realism. And it's as simple as that. But what's the second one? Well, the second one is the cycle float parameter behavior. This is the one that simply makes the cycle float move between two values, in this case, zero and one, and it sets how quickly it does it and also whether it does it linearly or as a lerp. And there we are, that's how it works. So if you want to try this out for yourself, check out the GitHub link below. The code is open source. We love your input, whatever form that takes. If you like what we're doing here, hit subscribe, hit the like button. If you want to hit the dislike button, please do. But tell me why you dislike. That's really helpful. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.